why I thought it was so important to me to play this character because, you know, I think that that's what these young girls and, and all of us feel, a lot of us tend to, without judging anyone, get messed up because they're like, well, I want the guy who's already established this, or I want the guy who has this kind of car, or this or that, and it's, a lot of us are taught that from a very young age, mm -hmm. guys got to have this. And it's unfortunate because then you've lost out all these other prospects of great people who have, you know, beautiful hearts who, you know, they love the Lord or whatever it is. And, you know, and, and then I think that a lot of the functional relationships come from that because women aren't necessarily all the time going out and having their own job and providing for themselves, looking for someone else to do it for them. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when the guy goes fat and he's sleeping around so there's no real respect or whatever it is, I just think that it creates this functional relationship. And so I wanted to play a character whose mind frame was that way and learn throughout the course of the film that, you know what, maybe it is the opposite. Maybe mm -hmm. I need to be more open-minded. And, you know, also, there, there is only the friends that are not championing for you to be happy, mm -hmm. you know? And so mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to show all that. I like playing characters that, that are very different, that kind of come to, you know, full circle by the end of the day. There's so many, so many characters in the film, uh, in the story game about Brad and Paul. Um, you know, that's where the main focus is, as far as, uh, you know, their relationship with me. Uh, me as his best friend, uh, and, and, and your uh, best man. Um, you know, I I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, but sometimes it's not it's not about me. You know, so um, hopefully in the future, whether it's uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, hopefully there is a, a, a sequel of future work so we can dig into fans of yes. But um, I, I, you know, I'm very thankful for you guys to be behind me and, and Megan and support us for the game. Because in all honesty, uh, the game gave the love that it is you know, getting and gotten has allowed me to be seen in the Hollywood So, um, but even if we were to stop today after we get out of this screening, this interview right here, I can honestly say I had to stand up for the Clark University and manage the nation in front of y'all. I can say yeah, I live. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to put D-Ray out there, but hey, you know, they said we got this, we got this football team, we got this, uh, team we're going to be on the beach. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so D-Ray, I can't for sure. That's it, that's it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And so, mind you, he is hilarious. A lot of people always ask him what's the, the funniest moment, or the memorable moment on the, on, the, on the movie. And there's so many, like, just memorable moments. Uh, a lot was just, you know, behind the scenes and stuff. And so, uh, so, uh, and we would always, me and Roman would always, like, mess with me. Like, we like, no, you should know, right? Don't so remind me. And yeah, I said, it, I said, so are you going to take your shirt off or are you going to not take your shirt off? I don't know. I'm like, okay. I mean, I mean you could, you know, you do anything, you look right. He's just like, I'm not looking right now. I said, <laughs> He D Ray was working out and had like like the the, the, the trim suits on, <laughs> like taped up, like so his body can just like shed all this I was like, D Ray, if you shoot like a fleet bro, like you can't lose like twenty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean I, I think, you know, one of one of my biggest goals is you know, I just got on the, on the production side of stuff, and, and I want to produce films that, you know, have faith faith in it as well, um, undertones, but again, is a preachy, it doesn't force that down your throat. Um, but I feel like part of my purpose is to change the faith of, of black art house films and black cinema, and to play my role, you know, to be the front line with that. And, um, so to me, you know, I want to be a part of films that literally change the way that people perceive things or change the way, you know, young folks look at the world or look at what it is they should and shouldn't be doing. Um, and I think, again, when it's done in this format where it isn't preachy and it doesn't scare people away, but it still gives it to you and you still receive it, you know, then that, that's the best case scenario. And for me, that's one of the main reasons that I did this film is because, you know, I am a Christian. I love the Lord with all my heart and I want to do you know, things that constantly reflect that and constantly reflect my beliefs, you know. And even though there's things out there that, that I might do that, you know, somebody might feel like is a contradiction of that, it's about 
where the character goes. And it's about who the villain can speak to. And it's about what God does located between you and him, you know? Video Girls is another one of that, like, for me, that's what it is for young women, because I have a passion and a heart for young women. Uh, I think it starts in a lot of ways with us because we become, you know, the backbone of the household. And um, if we don't raise good little girls, how can they, you know, be good to, to a young man or not cause him to be damaged good because of a lot of things that happen, you know? So, um, yeah, you get a chance to see video girls. Okay, uh, segueing, segueing from jumping the broom to the game, how do you feel about your role on the game this season? Before you answer, I want to say that was a very sexy role. I don't care what nobody <laughs> says. So. You know, I've actually caught a lot of slack. Like, on Twitter, people been tearing me up. Like, uh, I really felt like, no, like, they've been saying it's a positive thing, but it's like, I kind of feel like if you ever see the lowdown dirty shame or Jada Pickett, but you know for me it was about um, not judging the character and showing that even though people might do bad things quote unquote well actually a bad thing it's just you never know what they're going through or what's happening behind closed doors and what their circumstances or their situations is, you know is and so it's, it's always better to pray for someone and just not be judgmental, you know, and um, with Parker, you know, again, it's hard for me not to judge the character because I am against that, but at the same token, you know, I thought it was important to show this woman's been through something, and you just never know. That's, to me, the state of mind, so it's not so much about, uh, you know, oh, I have a lot of money that makes me better or smarter or uh, I'm going to have a better life uh, on the right person for you. Um, it means that you have more money, so whatever the case may be, whether you inherited it, you worked for it, um, scratch take a play the numbers, and you came into some, some money, but it, that doesn't uh, it doesn't change who you are. So um, does it help? Does it help out? Yeah, it does. And I think the way what's cool about this film is that you know there isn't or hasn't really been too many films where it was it was you know fan friendly, family friendly. Um, you know, we all know we all know what's out there as far as the videos and you know what people think is making it. I want to, you know, I'm never going to be able to have the right girl because I'm not playing for the Knicks or uh, I don't have a music video or I'm not a star. Um, and so I think you know that's why I make it a point to let everybody know that they matter with us or whatever they do. I'm probably going to let you be the best at it. Now I got fortunate to fall into the acting world. Uh, now what comes with that? I mean, you know. I never got involved in becoming famous. I like to make people laugh and entertain, meet new people, and be around new people. Um, so whatever happens from there um, you know, is what happens. But I know that the bottom line is I'm in charge of the pools. So you know, who I settle down with or decide to settle down with or in a relationship with or so on, you know, that's on me. And you work through those, you know, obstacles. Um, and you know, coming from different ways, it's really hard sometimes to communicate with like how that you want the relationship to work. Um uh, you like they should like literally thought I could like had a crush on her. Like, like, the first time I met her at you know, I, I was like at an after party or something and I you know, I had a drink or whatever, it was like after the work show. So I just walked straight up to her. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was a little relaxed. Maybe they made a comment about Beyonce being the new queen of something. And and I feel that everybody, there's enough room for everyone, you know, and everyone can have different positions. And so I just walked to Janet and said, just so you know, you will always be the same, you know. And I was kind of that. So then I ran into her again at a birthday <laughs> party for Jermaine Dupree. And I walked up to her and I literally went, <laughs> And then I came back and I was like, oh, she's gonna be okay. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say hi. So, okay. Wow. All right. I don't think I'm gonna do that. But like, that's still a lot. A lot of people think because you're in the industry that that's you. Once again, entertainmentreporters.com. This is the private screening for Jumping the Broom, the second one, which comes out May 6th, starring Megan Good, Pooch Hall, D. Ray Davis, Angela Bassett. 
Look at all these people out here waiting to see this movie. This is a great thing here. Support your black actors and everything is going down good. EntertainmentReporters.com. Check us out live and direct. www.EntertainmentReporters.com. And we are out of here. Let's go.